ladies and gentlemen, this is Eddie Marcus, spokesman and advocate of basic human rights for all people. I stand before you today because I have been given a responsibility to live before you and to speak before you the spirit for which I am continuing to be here. And that is a spirit of love from a power that is able to do what men cannot do and to bring information that has been hidden in hopes that it will serve you well. Truth of the matter, ladies and gentlemen, is that today we are living at a time when things are as crazy as things can get or ever has been. We have a United States of America that is divided, that is split, that is shut down, pain and suffering being felt, not by blacks and people of color, but people who thought they were of the middle class have been added to what we have called the lesser class, the underclass. The underclass, those that have been relegated to a position that says they are three-fourths human. They've been abused. They've been prostituted. They've been lied to and deceived. They have served servitude to those who have been as deceitful as deceit can be. And today we have a representative in the White House, a liar, a deceiver, a hater, a racist, a bigot. And ladies and gentlemen, he has been very instrumental in showing his colors while in office. But one major thing that he has been able to do that many of us might be surprised at, he surrounded himself with those who, as, who are as evil as he is, in his attempts to fool the people that he was going to drain the swamp, it seemed as if he brought all those crazy ones, those most evil ones, to serve with him in the office of President of the United States. Many of them have been indicted, many of them are going on trial, and many of them have been put in jail. And right now, our brothers and sisters are, I believe thousands of them, are on furlough or being working without payment, uh, it's a crying shame. And what happens? He doesn't care. Not only he, but those who represent him, like the Rush Limbaugh's or the Fox News or certain members of the Senate. You see, ladies and gentlemen, I have no problem with saying that in each of us there is a, a, a measure of love and there is a measure of hate. And there is an indication there that they are both leading the people to hell. But either and each one has a choice, a choice to climb up out of this head headed to hell and rise up to the occasion to what? To please the creator. And so ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to take this moment in time to address you. And I want to call this presentation one from the underclass, the underclass to serve you and protect you as President of the United States of America. Before I begin this, I'd like to say that a few years ago there was a, a influx of individuals wanting to serve from the Republican perspective. It ended up with Donald Trump. Right now we have, it appears, an influx of individuals running for office from the Democratic perspective. And I don't know whether they really got anything to offer or they're just doing the same thing, thinking that you've gone and elected a Donald Trump, you got to be out of your mind, and you just might give them a chance this time, hoping that they will do a little bit better. And I'm sure in each of their minds, they are convinced that they can do no worse than Donald. In fact, they have to do a little bit better. But my presentation here to you today, ladies and gentlemen, is to suggest that I've listened to them, and I'm with them. However, I have not heard a single messenger say anything that would convince me to believe that they have any more to offer than any of the candidates or any of the presidents that ever served you in the future. Somebody might rise up to that occasion, but as it stands right now, the speech is necessary. One from the underclass to serve you and protect you as president of the United States. Such a one wants to be your servant. When you have tried everything else and it fails, now try what can't fail. First, be advised that you and your careers 
played the most major role in the success of establishing peace, establishing prosperity, and joy of life for every American, for every American citizen. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I run into a problem here. Don't ask me why. But anyway, let me keep on going. <laughs> the clearest understanding of this ambition is that which is essential for survival, such as, but not limited to, food, clothing, shelter, education, and health care. These are guaranteed to every man, every woman, every child, elderly, straight, and gay, from the womb to the tomb, here in these United States of America. The plan is that every employable individual is encouraged to engage themselves in a career of their choosing, preferably one that gives the greatest joy. The idea is that most of the professions already in existence will end up being amongst the choices made by the citizens. The existence of career choices is the reflection of responding to what has been identified as essentials for survival. The choices are personal and resources are unlimited. Thus, good services will be created in such an abundance. So that which has been guaranteed is met and the reservoir will never be depleted or run low. Aside from that identified as essential, there will be true freedom for all the desired employment, including transportation, the arts, space, communication, travel, just to name a few. In addition to choosing careers of choice, it is incumbent that we agree as a nation, to choose the different approaches in our lives and society and will deny any and all viruses intent on altering or corrupting the will of the people. The power is that all public representatives will serve this special interest. Also, our efforts are to eliminate division, to eliminate poverty, crime, and violence, lying and cheating and stealing and killing and hatred and racism and bigotry and war by making our dream come true. These things I've just mentioned are evident in our society today, not just in other places of the world, but it is most renowned in the American. The strategy is to receive the joy from the choice of careers and accept your partnership in ownership and all that is created by the people. What you own, you do not buy. You have access to all that exists all of you. The underclass is those that have been labeled as three-fifths human, been robbed, disenfranchised, oppressed, criminalized, and endowed the worst of humankind. I say to the people, evil has a reputation of killing billions of people. Evil will destroy and kill every person on earth. It will use them that got to destroy them that don't, such as Stalin and Caesar and Pharaohs and Mussolini and Putin and Hitler, to name a few. So wake up, underclass. America needs you to save them. There is right and there is wrong. No in between. There is good and there is evil. No in between. There is heaven and there is hell. No in between. There is God. No in between. There is justice. No in between. It is all a lie. We are all together as one. No one is better than another, black or white. Men are no better than women. Americans no better than others. It was and is a lie to cause you to give up life for death. But we all choose to live. This message I bring to you, ladies and gentlemen, today is a message that I reach out from my heart. 
I used to want to serve you as president. I was given a message about 40 years ago to tell the American people that they were on the road to hell. That meant everybody in America, including the churches. I came, I spoke, I traveled the country. I gave the message, no one listened. I committed crimes against this evil system. I did what it said it didn't want me to do. Not that what I did was wrong, but it was illegal according to the system that propped up this evil nation. My reason for doing that was in hopes that I could get your attention, that you would might that you might would listen to the message that I bring. But I ended up serving the time for you did not listen, you did not pay any attention. At the election of Bill Clinton, I sought the office of President of the United States as a platform to speak to you at that level about God's plan for your peace and your happiness in heaven on earth. No one listened. I did that three or four times, a couple of times with Clinton. I even did it against Bush, did it even with Barack Obama because I knew neither of them had any message that would tell you anything about peace and prosperity and happiness of life for everyone. I knew that. So I came forward to you. I went to the church. They told me they were either Republican or Democrat. So what I brought about God did not matter. So it hurts me every Sunday when I go uh, to the churches and I see people filling the churches, paying their tithes and offerings, giving their testimonies, knowing myself that it meant nothing. They have no idea. You have no idea of what God is and God's purpose in life and your purpose in the process. But I wanted you to know it because it was given to me to share with you. I ran for president. I never tried to represent the Republican Party, at least after the first time. I re recognized that the Democrats didn't want this, definitely wasn't going Republican. And so I decided to go as an independent. But I would not ask for money, which is primary for us running for an office, a public office in America. Because I know what money represents. Money represents the deceiver. Money represents evil. Money represents those who want to play a part in progression in life without doing the right thing. In the right thing, you have to treat others like you want to be treated. And doing the wrong thing, just make the money. It doesn't matter how you treat other people. That's why we have so many wars. That's why we have World War I, World War II, Vietnam, uh, North uh, Korean conflict. It is because, my friends, Afghanistan, um, Iraq, all of these things, and the threat that we're having right now from the rest of the world who wants to attack America. They placed Donald Trump here to disrupt it, to bring it down to his knees, and use it as an opportunity to attack when the people have been so divided. They are, if you see the news and you watch what's happening in, in uh, Venezuela, that's the, the plan that they have for us here in the United States. And those who are searching for money have no idea. All they want to do is get money. They got billions and billions and billions of dollars. And it's just a few of them. And most of us, our numbers have been wide now because the uh, middle class have been dumped down here with the what you want to call us. The underclass. And so now, ladies and gentlemen, we have been given a position that we can either go down with this nation or we can save this nation. The way to save this nation is by lifting up love. Love is the element that will wipe out all of the sins of this nation. Many people perhaps will have to die, but that's life. And so I say to you, ladies and gentlemen, to think about these things. Those who are going to be running for office, who are speaking about their power and what they can do, are lying to you. If they tell you what the Democratic Party can do, and it's a lie. They're telling you what the Republican Party can do. It's a lie. Green Party and all that. It's a lie. The only thing that can work is God. And if you want God to work, you're going to have to change the way you act. You're going to have to start respecting one another. You're going to have to start to make, you're going to have to start and make sure that every individual in America has access to health care unlimited and unrestricted. Have access to education unlimited and unrestricted. Have access to food, clothing, and shelter unrestricted. You hear me? That means we're going to have to start doing things because we need one another and we're going to have to contribute from our position 
of that career which embodies us and gives us our greatest joy. And when we exercise ourselves and engage ourselves, we as an individual will play a direct contribution in the process of creating everything I just got through mentioning. The resources are from God. They are not from the rich. They are not from the Pope. They are not from white people or black people, depending upon where you are. They are from God. The ability to extract from them uh, comes from to, that you have comes from God. And the purpose is so that you can play a part in your own survival and get rid of that liar. Get rid of that deceiver that says somebody is better than the other. That one that creates racism and bigotry and, 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 and hatred and lies and cheating and wars. Oh, my God, you know the story. I don't have to go further than that. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, if you did not know I would come from this perspective, but I'm glad you stayed, and I hope it had some purpose. But I do want you to know that the answer to our problems is not in the church. Really, the answer to our problems is not in the Bible. The answer to our problems is in love, and love is generated through the Spirit. And only the Spirit of God. And if you want love, you want a new life, you're going to need a new spirit. And that spirit will come from God. It won't come from the church. It won't come from the Bible. It comes from a pure heart that wants to be genuine always. Till next time, this is Eddie Marcus, spokesman and advocate of basic human rights for all people. Say bye-bye.